Hey everybody, it's Dr. Perry coming at you from Stop Chasing Pain. I'm really excited to do an on-the-spot interview with uh, the awesome Adam Wolf over here. Adam, thanks for coming on, my it's friend. Pleasure, Perry. Thank you. I've just been a fantastic day learning from him on fascial highway systems here in New Jersey. You know, I don't get out often to take workshops because I'm usually teaching, but this is something that really resonated with me, and I gotta tell you, it's one of the best workshops I've ever attended. And uh, you know, Adam is a fantastic speaker. We were moving and shaking and doing all sorts of fun things in there, and I can't recommend it highly enough. So I said, hey, you want to come on in and let's just talk about a little bit about the course and go over a few things that were takeaways for me, and maybe if we have time, we'll end showing you one of the cool things that he demonstrates in the class. So, um, Adam, thanks for coming on. Yeah, my and pleasure. Why don't you tell people just briefly about yourself, and then also, you know, really what prompted you to create the Fastall Highway Systems and put it together? Yeah, good. Thank you. Well, first, let me thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to finally meet you in person and uh, been traveling, uh, following you along for a little while. So the opportunity to, A, have you in my course, uh, was a little nerve-wracking in the beginning, but uh, <laughs> glad you're there. Uh, I'm a physical therapist. I'm from Chicago, and I've owned my own practice for about six years. Uh, also a massage therapist and have my fellowship in applied functional science uh, through the Gray Institute. Gary Gray is a private father of function, is what he's known as, and uh, completed the 40-week program uh, in applied functional science, which is really just solidifying an understanding of three-dimensional movement, not only what should happen, why it happens, and then more importantly, strategies to assess if it happens or not. Uh, I started the course, or I put the get together the course uh, for a number of reasons. One, I, I just movement is a passion of mine. Uh, the cool thing about it is the more I learn about it, the more I feel like I need to learn about it. Yeah, no kidding, right? And, yeah, and, and uh, you know, I, I hadn't really found anything that talked about the integration of movement with some of the fascial highway systems. There's a bunch of them out there, including, you know, anatomy trains and the Steckos have their good ones. Chuck Wolf has flexibility highways. And uh, just a way to, you know, people have this information, but it's sort of, so what, what do you do about it when you're understanding movement? So I thought that just talking about motion talking about the truths of what movement really are and uh, ways to assess and address some of the limitations that we might find. So that was sort of the impetus to putting the course together. So, but I want to go over a couple of points. I mean, Good. it was a major, major knowledge bombs going on in there that I like to say, but there's a few that I want to highlight that I wrote down in the beginning. And the one I want to talk about is that you said um, movement is synchronous disassociation of body parts. And I love that. Can you explain that? Yes, absolutely. Well, first, I got to. Uh, I didn't. I didn't coin that term okay. by any means. Lenny Peristino is a uh, body worker and movement practitioner, one of my mentors, who I have a ton of respect for, and he's the one that I heard say that. And movement really is a synchronous dissociation of of, of segments. Uh, when we think about motion, you know, bones can move, but if bones move in the same speed at the same direction, then the joint isn't feeling any relative dissociation that needs to occur and it's all about getting the joints to feel uh, the motion that's occurring and so that synchronous dissociation it's sort of like a whip or a, uh, a whip and if the whip doesn't go in the right way if you're not synchronistically whipping it you're not going to get that crack at the end and it's really similar to the way the body moves if the body needs to move in certain parts and what happens in dysfunction in my opinion is that certain parts don't move enough or move together, which means another body part has to make up the difference. Because motion is dissipated in our system. By the time it gets to our eyeballs, we're gonna have to be dissipated after our, hit, our foot hits the ground. And if we can't dissipate that motion through our system, A, we're gonna walk with a bouncy eyes, we're gonna get headaches. Yeah. But really what's gonna happen is one body part's gonna have to make up the difference for the body part above or below that's not moving. And so that's where I think that that dissociation really comes into play. That really is a great way to look at it. So it really hits home about uh, patterning. Absolutely. Way to say it, to look at movement pattern. Absolutely. Great. So that was wonderful. And the other one is you had mentioned it was very straightforward, but the body is driven. Explain what that means. Well, applied functional science is sort of the merger of the physical, biological, and behavioral sciences, and really understanding that mind, body, spirit are extremely interconnected, just as the planes of motion are extremely interconnected, sagittal, frontal, transverse. Uh, the body, we're driven by all sorts of things, including our desires. I'm hungry, I'm driven to go get something to eat. My son's on the ground crying, I'm driven to go pick him up and comfort him. And there's all sorts of drivers. Pain is a very po powerful driver of the body. Uh, when we're talking about movement, though, movement is subconscious. You don't typically act upon anything in real life. We typically 
uh, get acted upon as opposed to doing the action we're getting acted upon. Right. And so when we're looking at assessing movement, we need to try to create ways that we can subconsciously cr make the system do what we want it to do. So drivers are a really good way to do that. A driver, when we're talking about movement, is defined as uh, utilizing a body part to subconsciously create a motion into another body part. For example, if I want to assess cervical range of motion, I could have somebody, I could tell somebody, look over your left shoulder, look over your right shoulder. And while that is looking at cervical range of motion, it's less authentic than it could be for a couple of reasons. One, the head is moving on a fixed body. And typically in function, the body moves on a fixed head when we're walking. And the other is that uh, it's conscious. I said, do you move your head? And that's not really the way that it works. And so we can utilize a body part to create a motion into my neck. For example, if I want to assess right cervical rotation, I can simply take my left hand and reach back behind me. And you can see that when I do that, and my left hand rotating to the left creates my, if, especially if I look straight ahead, I get right cervical rotation through that. So that would be an example of a driver. The cool thing about it is if you know what should happen in, in a body part when you drive the body there, you can see if it happens or not. And if you drive a body part to a certain place in space and what the reaction that you're looking for doesn't happen, well, then we can ask ourselves, why isn't it happening? And that's when we become that biomechanical detective to sort of sniff out the areas that aren't doing what it needs to do. I love that biomechanical detective. I, I, I do too. I'm going to call myself that one of these days, but nobody will know what it is. Uh, <laughs> everybody in the class will know anybody watching this. Yeah, yeah, actually, but I really... <laughs> go ahead. I, no, I just said I... I uh, Purchase the domain name Biomechanical Detective. So nice. all you gotta do is create a website. Here. Nah, that's how you do it, yeah. man. Yeah. That's how you do it. Well, you know, I really like that too because um, you, a lot of the things that people have these dysfunctions, they're they're subconscious, right? They don't they don't really know about it. So if I can have you move one way and you don't really know what I'm trying to look at, mm -hmm. it divulges a lot. And that was great for me because I tell everybody. I mean, you have to really, you know what's supposed to move and they do a movement. And you have to see, well, is it actually moving? And what's moving instead? Right. So, exactly and it tells right. you a lot. Exactly right. And, you know, sort of the irony of it in the, is that sometimes, you know, it's supposed to be so subconscious and we want to make it subconscious. But sometimes you need to point out their inability to do something. They don't know that they don't know. Yeah. And so to affect change, you have to make, you have to let them know that they don't know to ultimately let them know that they know, right? And so if we're going to do that, a lot of times there does have to be an element of consciousness to it. So do you see how you're not able to do one motion as well on one side of the body versus the other? So as, you know, there's the, the cool thing about function is that it, it's unique to the person we're working at and there is no absolute. So even though we do want to try to make it subconscious as much as possible, you know, adding that conscious piece into it sometimes is, you know, is appropriate. Yeah, because they have to change that behavior. Exactly right. Which, behavior. We'll, we'll, which we'll get into actually transitioning into my next question. Because you mentioned something called the individual uh, essentials, yeah. I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. And it was one was movement, two, nutrition, three, rest, recovery, four, behavior. And you spend quite a bit of time on this. And you said you actually have this up in your office on your wall. And you have it so patients can see it. Uh, can you just explain explain briefly why those four things are so powerful and what you do? Absolutely. Well, again, I got a, uh, Lenny Parasino is the one that came up with that, and I'm fortunate. Lenny to take sounds him. like a smart He's cat. Yeah, he really is. He's the <laughs> practitioner I'd like to be in a lot of ways. But Lenny uh, talks about the individual essentials. Movement is one, and I'd say that that's where our expertise lies in getting people to move better. Uh, nourishment or, uh, is one. You know, what am I putting into my body? I heard Paul Check once say, uh, "Would you want your eyeball, your body, to make an eyeball of that?" And so mm -hmm. what are we putting into our body? Rest and recovery is one, you know, uh, and, then, and then behavior is one. So I get people that come into my table, come in to see me all the time, and they get up off their table, and they're feeling great. And they come back, and, uh, and nothing has really changed. They feel exactly the way that they do. And this goes on repeated and repeated. And so what we need to ask ourselves is, in this individual essentials, regardless of the uniqueness of who we are, those are four things that all of us share in common. And so if I can prove to you and to me that I can make your movement better and you come back and nothing has changed, well, then we need to look at these other individual essentials. You know, I work with a lot of people that sit at desks. And so, oh, how's your work day? Oh, I'm so stressed. I got so much going on today. Uh, I had two cups of coffee. What did you eat today? I had a donut. And, and you start to put these things together and how many people are really running sympathetic in nature. And to really affect change and to affect tissue, we need to get them running parasympathetic a little bit. And so that's where it comes into play. You know, those, I work with a lot of runners as well. And so those people that they... they leave feeling great, they eat well, they take care of themselves, they get a lot of sleep, and they're fine for the first 12 miles, but that 14th and 15th mile is when the pain starts. And so I can, you know, that's sort of behavior. Well, if, if you're, and if that's your stress relief, 
and you go out and you're going to go run because that's how you relieve your stress. Well, that's your behavior that allows you to relieve stress, even though it's hurting you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and so it becomes important that I've got this on my on my wall. And when people come into me and you know are complaining about something, I point at it. I say, "You tell me where we're up here. You just told me that you didn't sleep well last night. You're stressed out at work. You're not eating well." You tell me what's up, and more times than not, you know, they know exactly what the problem is. And really, the only way to affect change, you know, we can give them the movement, but they've got to embrace it emotionally as well. So. That's great, because I love that, because you do have to put it back on them to have that degree of a self-responsibility, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's Okay, wonderful. so we're here with Adam, and he's going to give us an example of what we talked about in the interview of a driver and doing some movements to show you that. Adam, it's, it's yours. All right, so Perry, so well, one of the simple assessments that I like to do pretty much on everybody is just a global movement just like this. I feel like I can get a real good idea of just the global system and how you're moving throughout it. And so uh, what I'll have people do is just ask them to, to start doing this. And if you can notice right now, my head is going with my shoulders as I do this. So even though my head is moving in space and my chest is moving in space, they're moving at the same speed in the same direction, and I'm not really getting any cervical motion. And so if people choose to do that, and they're very symmetrical when they're doing it, I'll say, great job, Perry, what I want you to do is look straight ahead. I'll have them do it in a mirror a lot of times, and I stand behind them, but I'll have them do the same thing and look at themselves in the mirror. And so all of a sudden, if they're symmetrical when they're doing it this way, and I have them look straight ahead, and all of a sudden one side of the neck starts to bail out, you can see I have trouble with right rotation as I do that, well, I can ask myself, well, what changed there? If, I, if they're symmetrical when they're moving and I have them focus their eyes to use an eye driver and things get asymmetrical, that tells me that I need to sort of sniff out the upper thoracic spine and cervical spine to see what might be going in, uh, what might be going on in terms of uh, limiting the motion. So that would be an example of uh, just a, an eye driver that I would use uh, for a quick assessment. That's great. That, I mean, that tells you a ton right there. Thanks, my friend. Thank you. I wanted to know if you can tell people uh, you know, where they can get more information you know, about the course and you know how they can get in contact with you Good. Maybe if they have some questions. And then what we're going to do uh, after that is that I'm going to record you doing one of the things that you show, which I thought was awesome. One of the things that you'd like to do, if you don't mind, is how sure. you just use that thoracic spine rotation move just to look at and, and show some of the things that that tells you right out of the gate. I think that's a really cool takeaway because... Everybody's got a great functioning thoracic spine, right? Oh, yeah, everybody. We never have to look at that. Yeah, so, uh, why don't you tell everybody where they can get some info? Good. Well, uh, you know, I, I, again, I'm in Chicago, and uh, you can find me on Facebook at Adam Wolf uh, 360 Physical Therapy. You can also find me on 360 PT Chicago. Uh, and find me on the internet. Yeah, I think that uh, also, I think that's probably the best place. Yeah, and then you can get the course if you want to attend one of his courses, or maybe you would like to have the course in your area and have a host of course that would be kind of cool absolutely you can contact uh, medical, medical minds, minds in motion, in motion. Yeah. and that's medical minds in motion.com yeah those mm-hmm. guys are awesome you know Rick Daigle who runs that very good friend of mine you just can't go wrong with this one so once again thanks for coming in it was My great pleasure. stop chasing pain learned a lot from you today appreciate your uh, opportunity to be here man thank Anytime, you bro you got it nice